Hi, everybody. My name is Susie Jiggs, and I'm excited to share with you one of the great things we've got going on in the state of Texas called Navigating Life for Students with Hearing Loss. Like most of you, we've been approached by vocational rehab, disabled student services, the university level saying our students are missing some of the skills they need. They can't explain about their hearing levels. They don't understand their accommodations. So therefore, we need you in the schools to teach all of this stuff. Now, we don't have a problem with knowing that our students need all this. The reality is the kids take 28 classes over four years. They need 26 plus state credits to graduate. So that doesn't leave much time for deaf and hard of hearing specific skills. Texas Education Agency provides um, organizations the opportunity to create innovative courses, which are elective courses that school districts can adopt that are then given state credit. We write the knowledge and skills. It must be rigorous. If they approve it, then it's great. So we created one called Navigating Life with Hearing Loss that covers the areas of the expanded court curriculum that relate to students who are deaf or hard of hearing specifically. We brought together a group of teachers from all over the state of Texas. We Zoomed before Zoom was cool back six, seven years ago when we first started on this. The teachers put together scope and sequence, 13 units, 35 lessons, and they used a template to make sure that all of the lessons followed the same format. The very first unit that the students do is an introduction to the course, kind of an overview of what they're going to be doing, but then they also do some beginning of course assessments that are things like how they prefer to learn, what their learning style is, um, what their strengths, what their weaknesses, some of their transition goals, things like that. They put that all together in a portfolio and throughout the entire course, they use that portfolio to keep adding to. So by the end of the course, they've got a very rich resource that they can use as they meet with adult agencies. I wanna walk through real quickly one of the lessons, an example, this is interpret and explain personal audiograms. Each lesson starts with a duration and the teachers figured out approximately how many course periods, class periods it would take to teach, sometimes um, teachers can go faster or slower depending on the needs of the students. And then we had already created the standards and so um, they pulled out which ones go with each lesson. They wrote up some key understanding and guiding questions for each lesson just to really help us target what we really want the students to know by the end of the course and how it applies to their life. There's resources in each lesson. Most of them are ones that the teachers have created or they have um, gotten from Creative Commons online. They put together in a, a Google Drive that while there is not a monetary cost to use it, we do ask that everybody keep adding to it to help grow the library. There are some resources that are to be purchased like the Steps to Success, um, but there's not very many of those. Each of the learning targets is scaffolded. There are um, three different levels for differentiation, basic, intermediate, and advanced. All the students start at the basic level, but for students who are able to work a little bit more quickly or need to do a little deeper dive, they can work on intermediate or advanced targets while some of our students are still focusing on those basic targets. Vocabulary is set up the same way with three different levels and the intermediate and the advanced um, vocabulary deals with their learning targets as well as some of the teaching strategies, the activities that we're doing. Each of the activities build upon each other. So while one that is at a basic level um, doesn't have as much rigor or as much breadth or depth for what they're learning, intermediate and advanced go into that. These are all of the different units and lessons. I'm not gonna go through these because that would take eight minutes. However, you will find all of our resources on our bit.ly, bit.ly slash NLWHLDHH. 
Navigating Life with Hearing Loss, DHH. And that link will also be in the um, handouts that are in the app. One of the things that the teachers who've been teaching the course put together was a Facebook group. It's a closed Facebook group, but anybody who's teaching Navigating Life is welcome to ask to join. And it's been a great place for them to share pictures of activities, share finished projects from the kids. They did get permission from the parents and names are redacted, but it's been fun to see what they're doing, how they're doing it. Another thing that they do with this is as they create new materials, they upload them to the Google Drive and then they send out a, hey, everybody, something new's there. So they're able to crowdsource this. Many minds do great things. Another thing that they use this for is as a way to bounce ideas off of each other. Hey guys, I have this problem. This isn't working. How are you handling this? How did y'all teach this? And again, crowdsourcing many minds. And one of my favorite things is just to see how excited everybody is as new schools are beginning to offer it. And the teachers come in and they're just like, yay. We started, um, this is our fifth year offering the course. 2016 was the first year. We had three districts offer it, which when you think of 1,200 districts in Texas, that's not very many, but only 54 of them have deaf ed teachers, have, have deaf ed programs. So three out of 54 is not near so bad. And as you can see, the numbers went up. But then we found that there was a little dip. As students took the class their freshman or sophomore year, they still had two, three years more of school. They've already taken it. And there weren't that many freshmen coming up. So several of the teachers that are not in the largest schools found out that they really needed to offer it every two years or possibly every three years. So they asked for additional years. What we're working on right now is taking the curriculum that we've got, the knowledge and skills, dividing it into about one and a half years, because it is pretty dense, adding content for another half a year so that we've got two full years, adding additional curriculum, getting more districts on board. We're excited about all of that. You can find everything, the curriculum, all of the different resources at bit.ly slash NLWHLDHH bit.ly at or slash navigating life with hearing loss DHH. Again, this link will be in the app, um, in the CEC conference app. And we look forward to seeing you, all of you using the curriculum and helping us to grow and add to it. Thanks for sticking with me for eight minutes.